Welcome to Dar Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. In our top stories, Philippines team members set up a joint free clinic with the Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus to help cataract patients. In Taiwan, the City College of Technology organized a ceremony to honor two silent mentors before their first simulation surgery program. And we see how young people today courageously fight to realize their dreams despite facing tough competitions from home and abroad. First up in the Philippines, team of medical staff and the Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus have recently partnered in a free clinic earlier this month to provide surgery to cataract patients who cannot afford treatment and thus helping them see the world once again. Witness, all witness. Yes, sister, you hold it. You hold it together. Sister Anna Marie from Italy, also a doctor, has been in the Philippines for years where she works to help the poor receive needed medical treatment. Upon meeting Siti, the sister recognized the NGO's commitment to the poor, and the two orders soon came together to host regular free clinics in the community. The city clinic has first-rate equipment, thus allowing the poor to receive the same level of medical care as the rich. Two years ago, Nelson Ramos started losing his vision. As it affected his ability to work, he soon after lost his job. After losing my job, some family friends introduced me to a village doctor who sold herbal treatments. However, after taking his medicine, my vision got worse. Visiting a public hospital, Ramos learned that he was in fact suffering from cataracts. However, he had no way to pay for surgery to remove them. Hearing of his plight, the Sister of the Sacred Heart of Jesus ensured that Ramos had a place in the first free clinic co-hosted by Tsiji and the Catholic Order. Because they helped my husband recover his vision, I'm so happy. Even though we don't have any money, I still feel so content. I am so happy that you helped my dad to be able to see the world again. It means that my dad can now come to my graduation ceremony. Now with eyes to see, Ramos can see his beautiful daughter graduate from high school and look forward to better days ahead. Also holding a free clinic to help the needy are team of doctors in Hong Kong who organized the event at Team 3 Way to offer basic health examinations and various types of medical services. In all, 39 medical staff were mobilized to serve 180 residents. In Hong Kong, team of doctors and medical volunteers are holding a free clinic in Tim Sui Wei, which saw over 100 residents attending to receive doctors' diagnosis. To lower your cholesterol, you can eat cereal as breakfast for a month. It will work. One more time, please, because you closed your eyes. Open your eyes, okay? The free clinic provides basic health checkups and various medical services. You have mild cataract, but your eyesight is still fine. You don't have to see a doctor or undergo surgery. Dr. Li Wang Wei is an ophthalmologist. This time she brought her husband, a rheumatologist, to serve the senior residents. Kindly and patiently answering residents' questions regarding their health, Tima doctors not only offer quality services but also health care tips. The doctors taught me a lot of knowledge about health care. They are helpful. Doctors provided me with a thorough diagnosis and taught me how to exercise to relax my body. The arrival of Tima doctors helps better safeguard the health of local residents. On June 24, 2011, Dr. Wu Hongbin from the Taizong City Hospital worked in partnership with a local children's hospital in China's Jiangsu province to perform the first ever cochlear implant surgery in Suzhou for Wang Xinhua, who suffered hearing impairment since birth. Thanks to the hearing aid, Wang is now able to hear and speak like a normal child, and Dr. Wu also revisited the boy recently with a tool to help him learn faster and easier. Seeing the numbers on the toy, three-year-old Wang Xinhua can not only recognize them, but also utter them as well. By his side are his parents and Dr. Wu Hongbing. This one. This one. 
Only upon seeing the cochlear implant fitted in his right ear will people realize that Wang was born with a hearing impairment. To help Wang continue to improve on his hearing, Dr. Wu recently brought him a new toy. The music can stimulate his reaction to sounds. This way, he can better recognize the tones and improve his hearing. When Wang was only one year old, Dr. Wu performed a cochlear implant surgery for the young patient. This time around, he's back in Suzhou to check on the boy's progress. Along with his growth, the electric current of the device has to be adjusted accordingly. Wang's parents sell vegetables in a market. Despite working day and night, they could never earn enough to cover their son's medical fees. Thanks to Ziji, Xinhua is able to hear and speak now. Without Ziji's assistance, my son would have never had a chance to hear. Your mama. Yeah. Hey. Mrs. Wang has waited for a long time to hear her son call her mommy. Hearing him calling me mommy for the first time makes me so happy. Seeing the less fortunate who are struggling, we, the blessed, must lend a helping hand. Able to now hear and speak, Xinhua isn't afraid of making friends with the other kids at school. Placing his little palms together in thanks, this boy is now heading towards a better future. Following his first cochlear implant surgery in Suzhou two years ago, Dr. Wu Hongbing from the Taizong Ciji Hospital took the opportunity of the opening of the Ciji Suzhou Grant and the Health Promotion Center in China to revisit his young patient Wang Xinhua and also organize a two-day free health consultation to help more children with hearing impairments. This little girl is four years old but still cannot speak. It turns out she was diagnosed with a hearing impairment. The local children's hospital told us my daughter is not able to hear. I was shocked. My mother and I kept crying, but I knew crying could not solve the problem. However, her parents didn't give up, and thankfully, they learned of the free consultation being held at the Suzhou Ciji Health Promotion Center. Unaware of the uncertainty of her future, the little girl is all smiles, while her parents are full of worries. It is better to undergo surgery. If it succeeds, she may be able to hear in the future. <laughs> Patiently listening to the little girl's parents is Dr. Wu Hongbin of the Taizong City Hospital, who is here from Taiwan to safeguard the health and hearing of local children. Many kids here suffer from hearing impairments and they have to go to language training schools. People have different ideas on when to wear a cochlear implant or hearing aid. So I want to take this opportunity to exchange opinions. Through exchanges of medical knowledge, doctors from Taiwan are here to safeguard the health of local residents and make the future of those suffering from hearing impediments a bright one. Prior to the beginning of the simulation surgery program at City College of Technology in Hualien, which is the first vocational college to have simulation classes in Taiwan, a ceremony was held to honor the selfless giving spirit of the silent mentors. The two donors this year, Lai Ling Su Zhao and Zhong Yi Yo, were both devoted volunteers before passing away. Let's take a look. No. The chanting of Buddhist scriptures marks the beginning of this year's simulation surgery here at City College of Technology, the first college in Taiwan to have such a program. The two silent mentors were both devoted city volunteers, with Grandma Lai Ling Su Zhao collecting 200 to 300 membership fees on her own each month. Despite only graduating from elementary school, the senior learned how to use tablet computers to study Buddhism and always seized every giving opportunity. Because of the way she gave herself, her children all agreed to her decision. I believe after this ceremony, her children will devote themselves more. 
The other Sunland mentor, Zhong Yi Yeo, was a hard-working recycling volunteer. Known for his motto, surrounded by garbage but with a heart of purity, Zhong continued to set an example in death by donating his body to medical science. My dad's spirit of giving is really admirable. Tsuji has devoted a lot into humanitarian work. I will follow dad's footsteps and learn the spirit of great love. Different from the medical students at the city university, TCCT teachers lead the simulation surgery to help students understand human anatomy and thus learn to empathize with patients when they enter the workforce one day. In the future, with the spirit of these silent mentors, I will try my best to help patients and minimize any pain they have to go through. The two silent mentors not only give the students a chance to learn practical anatomy, but their selfless giving spirit will also inspire the hearts of these young people for a lifetime. Among the students taking part in the musical adaptation of the Sutra of Profound Gratitude to Parents last weekend in Hualien was the sister pair Huang Wen Rei and Huang Wen Yu from the Tsuji Elementary School. To get ready for the musical, the girls frequently practice sign language at home and in turn inspired their mother to join volunteers' ranks. This is Huang Wen Rei, a grade 2 student of the Hualien Tsuji Elementary School. Along with her older sister Huang Wen Yu, the two are taking part in the musical rendition of the Sutra of Profound Gratitude to Parents. Arriving at home from school, what follows is not play. Chopping vegetables and holding a wok entails strenuous effort. Yet the sisters are preparing dinner for the family. They're willing to help their mom, and their actions are their way of displaying their filial piety. As Wen Rei's father is often away on business in China, her mother looks after the family. Since taking part in the sutra performance, the sisters have come to better understand their mother's load. Hence, the two work to lessen mom's burden whenever possible. I do chores, I wash dishes, mop the floor, take out the garbage, and I also wash clothes. Wen Rei's mother, Jiang Xiaoli, is originally from Hunan, China. With her parents still living in China, when Jiang heard the lyrics to the sutra, a sense of longing for her family stirred up in her heart. I always tear up when I hear the song Kneeling Lamp. It reminds me of my own parents. I wasn't used to expressing my love for them before, but now I do, even if it is through a text message. Sometimes I will also share Jinsi aphorisms with my father. With a firm belief in Tiji's philosophy, Jiang Xiaoli signed up for the commissioner training program and has also joined the team of Da'ai mothers at the Tsuji Elementary School. I hope I can be a good example for the students and that one day my children can be proud of me too. My hope for them is to become someone who will reach out to help others. Often too shy to express their thanks, this time Wen Rei and Wen Yu want to say Baba, Mama, In Malaysia's clan, 22-year-old Yima Kuva was not given the chance to make his dreams come true as he was diagnosed with leukemia soon after finishing college and was told he only had six months to live. City volunteers accompanied the young man through his treatment and even helped him fulfill his final wish of an outdoor picnic with the students to whom he once provided tutoring. Two days after the picnic, Kuma passed away peacefully with no regrets. <laughs> After Diva Kuma became ill, what he worried about most was a group of students to whom he used to provide free tutoring lessons. City volunteers are helping him fulfill his final wish of an outdoor picnic with these children. Though I'm ill, I still hope all my students will live a successful life. After 22-year-old Kuma graduated from college, he was heartbroken to hear that he had leukemia and only had six months to live. A day out in the sun is something the young man wanted to hang on to. I don't want to go home. I want to stay longer. The children are all here and we are having fun. We eat together like we are a family. I'm so happy. Two days after the picnic, Kuma peacefully passed on.
Prior to his passing, city volunteers had accompanied Kumar and his family through chemotherapy. He told me the patient in the opposite room or opposite bed passed on, so I will tell him that they have come to the end of their lives. Volunteers told me that the bodhisattvas are with me and not to complain and to accept my fate. Kuma at first could not come to terms with the fact that his life was to be cut short, but it was the volunteers who taught him to let go and find peace of mind in his final days. I wish to recover soon so that I can join Siji and be a part of this big family. <laughs> Though Kuma was never able to realize this wish, however, the good affinity he built with Tiji will continue in life after life. March 29th is Youth Day in Taiwan, and the origin of this holiday comes from what was later known as the Second Guangzhou Uprising, in which a group of young men revolted against the government in hopes of creating a brighter future for their country and their families. Although this historical moment has long faded from the minds of many, today's younger generation, however, faces different battlefields in employment. Here's more. <laughs> In 1959, a grand celebration for Youth Day took place here at Jiantan Youth Activity Center. However, do modern-day youths feel the same way towards Youth Day? Youth Day? When is it? March 18th? In Taiwan, March 29th is Youth Day, which seems to be a forgotten holiday along with its history of bloodshed and tears. Taiwan's founding father, San Yasen, commanded Huang Xin to carry out an uprising in Guangzhou. In the end, their forces were outnumbered by the opposing government soldiers. When the fighting ceased, a fellow revolutionary risked his life to collect the bodies of the dead and bury them collectively outside Guangzhou city at a place called Honghua Gang. Only 72 bodies could be identified. Honghua Gang was later renamed as Huanghua Gang. The 72 soldiers were mostly youths in their early 20s. Praised as heroes and martyrs in 1954, the Taiwanese government declared March 29 as Youth Day to commemorate these fallen soldiers. The most famous story of the 72 martyrs is Lin Juanming, who wrote a farewell letter to his wife on a handkerchief. <laughs> He wrote, I love you very much, and this same love allows me to boldly give up my life for my country, as my country is in grave danger. I extend my love for you to help others, to help our country. This part of history lives on in the genre of campus folk rock, which was deeply rooted in the 70s music scene in Taiwan. <laughs> Different generations sing different anthems. The patriotism exhibited by the younger generations of the past days has dissipated. In these times, what the youths of today care about are their own dreams and futures. I want to continue to do what I like to do. For example, if I could continue to sing and make it my career and also make money while I'm at it, that would be great. The obstacles that the younger generation faces now are completely different from that of older generations. Unemployment numbers for young professionals ages 20 to 24 in February was a record 13.22 percent. With the average overall unemployment rating at 20 percent, what chance does the youth of today have when job hunting? Nowadays, it gets competitive after college graduation. They are competing for jobs. Companies are only hiring 1% of all those applying for jobs. 
One survey shows that for 43% of young people from ages 20 to 24, what they worry over most is finding a job. However, even those with jobs, over half of them receive a salary of less than 1200 US dollar. It takes time for your salary to increase. Besides the problems in job placement, the survey also shows that 47.5% of youth's current employment is not related to what they studied in school. In fact, only 24.2% have jobs that emphasize the skills studied in school. It would be best if students had internships or work experiences before graduating from school. This way, they have opportunities to get some real work experience. In facing unemployment and low wages, for the youth of today, this is their battlefield. I feel in this society, if you have a special skill or something unique that you can do better than others, that is more important than a higher education. As different generations faces different life challenges, using confidence and perseverance is a tactic that has not changed. Moving to the United States, city volunteers in Hawaii organized a training seminar to introduce the Buddhist NGO to more rural Cove residents. Through the sharing of translating volunteers and sittings, participants all gained better understanding of the city's message of gratitude, respect and love. Practicing one-on-one -on, -one on how to transmit the philosophy of the team, these teachings and translation volunteers use the ideas of gratitude, respect and love to get their point across. Their hope is to get more young volunteers to join them in working on behalf of society. It's our intrinsic nature. It's something that everyone has. Why is it that, you know, even though not all of us have had those experiences, I've never been diagnosed with cancer, David hasn't had his first child yet, I think. <laughs> 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 David still hasn't gotten his first car. So even though we haven't had these experiences, how is it that we can all kind of agree on what someone is going through? This compassion for others is at the foundation of both volunteer work and personal growth. Along these lines, thanks to the efforts of translation volunteers, more and more young people are joining Ching sponsor activities, which included providing hot meals and a caring smile for the homeless. Through such activities, Ji has seen its volunteer numbers swell, thus ensuring its continued presence in the community at large. In Malaysia, teachers from the Tsiji Johor Bahru Kindergarten organized a special trip to the dialysis center to help students learn about human anatomy. Apart from making Jing Si Afrosim's cards, the children also prepared two sign language songs for the dialysis patients. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.